Welcome to curl 7.80.0. I'm Daniel. This is the release presentation of what we've done this time. And uh, this time with me in a bad frame rate, but let's ignore that for the moment. Uh, so yes, I'm Daniel Stenberg. I uh, run uh, this project. Well, I'm probably the lead maintainer and I founded the project back in 1998. I work <coughs> for Wolf SSL where we do curl support. So if you and or your company needs curl help, get in touch. I will do this presentation and include stuff uh, as I always do, like numbers and security features, bug fixes, and some something about what's uh, coming next, uh, the regular setup. So let's dive into this at once. This is release 204 since the beginning uh, under the name curl. Uh, we have a lot of people helping out as usual, so we recorded the names of 78 contributors in this release cycle and 44 of them new, so we're adding them at a uh, really high pace, over 2500 names now. 50 authors wrote commits that were merged into the code. Um, well, the uh, Git repository for the code in this release cycle, and 28 of them were new. So we're quickly approaching a 1,000 commit authors. We might reach that number with before the end of the year, or we might not. Uh, it'll be interesting. Anyway, soon to be 1,000 authors of, of Curl. And of course, we spent se um, seven weeks this time for this release because we had a patch release and we didn't change the release date for this. So we usually have eight weeks. This time we had seven weeks, 49 days. And so, yes, we have spent a lot of days on curl so far. Uh, and this is since curl, the first curl release, we actually renamed it then. So we actually worked on it before. And I, uh, I'm pretty happy to say that we don't have any security uh, advisories this time. Uh, so nobody has reported any vulnerabilities in curl. Uh, so we just repeat that we have a bug bounty and we pay rewards. If you have a suspected uh, security problem in curl, report it and we will get to it and we will pay you money for it. F uh, 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 of course, um, assuming that it is confirmed and it is act uh, that it actually is a security problem. So no security problems, but we have new things in curl this time. That's why we have the dot zero at the end, right? So 7.80.0 brings new things to uh, the curl world. So we have a few new knobs in the control room. Uh, so first to start off with, we have this little libcurl set opt option, uh, max lifetime con, which is a way to for an application using libcurl to say that we don't want to reuse a connection that is older than this. Pretty much uh, a way for applications to stop reusing connections uh, after a long period of time. It turns out that for some, kind, for some applications, when you, you reuse a connection over and over and over, and you have a set of connections, you might end up with them in a sort of non-ideal situation where most of them are sort of stuck on the same load balancer, for example, if you know that you have a number of them. And by making sure that you stop reusing them after a certain time, you can make sure that you exercise, maybe connect to a new one, or at least allows the setup of a new connection to a new load balancer. So this, you, you just set it in a number of seconds, how, how long you allow it to have existed before you reuse it. A uh, pretty niche one. Read up on the docs if you if you didn't get my kind of convoluted explanation. And there's a new callback called pre-rec. That's the pre-request. So immediately before a request is issued over a connection, the callback is called. It's a pretty much an informational thing. Hey, we're going to start the request now. Here's some data uh, about it. And the application can then, of course, abort it and things like that. There's a new way to check the public key of an SSH server. Um, this is more of a cleanup thing because we have this option before for MD5, MD5 hash 
and this is a SHA-256 instead. And as you know, M MD5 is uh, sort of considered bad, insecure and wrong to use since a while back. And we have just now then made sure that we provide the better SHA-256 version of that function. So it's basically the same function, but with a better hash. No, nothing strange, but uh, if you're on, uh, if you're talking to SSH servers, that might be something for you to check out. We also have, a, uh, we also did three other things. We added a new function to the API called curl URL str error, and this is also to just complete the set of functions that we have. Most, so we have a few different sets of functions in curl. We have the, you know, the EC API with the multi API, the share API and the URL API and so on. And they, all well, the other ones have these str error versions. They basically convert the error code to a string. And in, we didn't have that for the URL API and now we do. So if you try to parse a URL for, for example, with a curl URL set function and it returns an error, error four, then you can use this function to convert that numerical error to an error string to basically maybe help your application or users or log or whatever. Um, uh, similarly, uh, in the URL uh, API, we have this, uh, I actually think it's wrong here because it's, it's not only get, it's the set function. So when you parse a URL, it now supports the UNC paths uh, on Windows and UNC being, you know, this weird machine name slash share backslash things that you have on Windows. Uh, and in in the Wolf SSL backend, you can now set uh, TLS at 1.3 groups uh, slash curves, which means, which in my particular case, or that's why I have this f uh, fun um, post quantum image and I call the, uh, the release post quantum on the on my blog because it allows you to set post quantum algorithms if you build Wolf SSL with, with that support enabled, which is fun because we're going into a, wor a world and time when, when you, we start to consider post quantum algorithms because quantum computers might at some point appear and then a lot of the algorithms we use today are bad. Anyway, read up on that if you're interested in, in fixing your uh, connections for post quantum Things. So we did recorded, logged 117 bug fixes. Most of them you don't care about, but some of them are fun to talk about. So I'm going to mention some of them here, maybe 12 of them or so, 13 maybe. So <clears throat> um, I did a lot more work on the hyper back end this cycle. Hyper being an alternative HTTP library written in Rust. So we have that, you know, you can use that instead of a lot of native HTTP code in, in curl. If you just enable that in the build, that's still experimental. We still have a bunch of tests disabled when you build with Hyper. And I'm working to slowly, slowly enable more and more of those tests with the ultimate goal of having no tests disabled when you have Hyper enabled. And I'm not there yet, but I, I did a lot of work to make sure that we're, we're going in the right direction. I think we're at 37 tests still disabled or so, something out of uh, many. Um, I did this weird, uh, uh, we did it a little uh, visual thing that if you use curl dash dash help, you will see that description, the, the descriptions of the command line options are now right aligned. You'll see that it's uh, it's a very tiny change and it doesn't really matter for, for any functionality, but I think it's actually turn, turns out much more pleasing on the eye. It looks much better actually, more sort of a better look on, on the output. Um, we fixed things like we did this, uh, uh, HTTP3 is using QUIC, so QUIC is not TCP and there are things then on the connection layers that have changed and keep on um, well, we need to keep putting focus on, on how we do things. And we someone reported that we actually didn't store the remote IP address properly for quick connections in the, and you know, you can exp uh, extract that IP address after a transfer with the curl easy get info API, or with, uh, if you're using the command line tool with the W, well, the dash W option, the write out option, if there's a variable called rem 
remote IP and it was actually blank before this fix for uh, HTTP 3 connections, but now it's fixed. I sort of tightened the bolts a little bit and made sure that the HTTP parser now rejects HTTP responses with a response code that is less than 100 and 100 and being the smallest three digit number that you can have in a response code for HTTP. There are no other, I mean, in, in the HTTP spec, you can't actually, it defines that there's no, no legal HTTP response with, with a number lower than 100, that's three digits. And previously, curl pretty much accepted any response code here. It could be lower than 100, it could be actually use one digit, and I even think it allowed negative numbers which of course it was completely unnecessary and uh, um, I don't know really, <laughs> I can't recall. I, well, I know why, why we did it that way, but <laughs> now I try to align the implementation in, in with the native code with what Hyper does so that Hyper and, and curl natively would work more similarly. So I took that opportunity to strengthen, uh, to make the native HTTP parser more strict. And a lot of other tools and libraries and stuff already have this requirement in place. So you will see, I, I doubt that this will cause any problems anywhere. But anyway, uh, let me know if it does. Some other tiny little details, of course, there's another HTTP2 fix in this release. I'm sure there, there will be more coming uh, in the future as well. But in this case, it turned out that we had a little nasty bug when you try to upload data over HTTP2 and you run out of um, um, window size uh, uh, on the remote side. Re on in HTTP two, each stream that you're sending, they are given a window. You know, a, a number of bytes that you can send to the other side, and then then the other side says, "Sure, increase the window. We can still accept this many bytes until it stop, uh, um, until you need to stop sending." And in the case where the other side stopped uh, accepting more data, so the window size would run down to complete zero, then that's pretty much saying that you can't send any, da any data right now to the other end. But libcurl didn't really care about that, but it noticed that it could write to the socket, so it would attempt to write to the socket, but it, wouldn't, it wasn't allowed to. So it would become, sit in a pretty much uh, silly, busy loop there that um, um, was unnecessary and then would consume pretty much 100% CPU for a, at least for a short period of time. I think it could get stuck there for even longer, but uh, not very nice. Fixed now. There are more bug fixes to mention. Um, one of those silly things that we've lived with for much too long without fixing is that when you check the version number that uh, of curl and all its subcomponents, you know, all the dependencies of curl, it asks for the libssh2 version and it used the build time version and not the runtime version, which is silly because you can and you often do upgrade that library independently of curl itself. So it would then show the wrong version number. No more. I've worked quite a lot on cleaning up details in the curl, uh, in particular the libcurl man pages. So now I've um, fixed some, some tests and, and scripts to make sure that all man pages now use the same section head headers in the same order. And uh, it, it also requires examples to be present and it, it does some basic checks on the, that as well. So it's actually, uh, a way to make sure that we have more st sort of consistent man pages. We're stricter about having everything in the same order, looking the same, sounding the same. I think it's uh, it all in all makes the documentation better. One of those tiny fun things that we have in, <laughs> well, uh, let me say thanks. So we support NTLM in curl. We supported NTLM authentication with uh, HP for, I don't know, probably 20 years. And it turns out that when, when you build curl with OpenSSL to do NTLM. We use this function. No, we use the function des set key, which sets a des key. So because NTLM uses des, des being a completely insecure and, and uh, discouraged outdated 
crypto algorithm, but still NTLM uses it. So if you want to use NTLM, you need to use this. Anyway, if you use this function in OpenSSL, it actually very often fails because uh, when using NTLM and this function, it turns out that it uses an, a very, very unsafe key uh, in many times, especially if you use a very short uh, password with NTLM. And it turns out that then, uh, OpenSSL then uh, returns failure and refuses to work, which uh, it's kind of interesting because we haven't noticed and we've been doing this for, for ages. And now we changed to use this uh, new function instead to which doesn't return a failure and it doesn't check the input. That's the unchecked uh, string in the name. It improves NTLM <coughs> when uh, built with OpenSSL. And there's talking then also another OpenSSL related thing or with uh, actually with all the OpenSSL forks that we now skip the CA set loading completely if you disable the verify peer option. So if you say to libcurl, uh, don't bother about verifying the peer, the signature uh, or sort of the, the certificate, the server certificate, now it'll then skip the loading of the CA uh, cert bundle completely. Of course, you shouldn't ever really uh, skip the verification because it makes your uh, connection insecure. But if you do, it'll be a little bit faster and use a little bit less memory. <clears throat> One of the fun things in the world is, of course, how you parse URLs. Or in URLs is, a, is a really, really a Wild West format. There's no... I should say like this, the, the specification situation and the documentation situation and the parser situation is, is varying all over. So there are a, little, a lot of different uh, parsers everywhere and they, they, they don't all agree on how to do things. But anyway, someone is writing a report on that and they contacted me about it. And then they also pointed out that uh, they compared, I think, seven or eight different URL parsers and noted different uh, differences between the parsers and one of the differences in curl's parser compared to some of the specification is that the curl parser actually didn't parse percent encoded sequences in host names uh, i think it's fun because curl has never done it uh, and uh, we've never had a bug report on it until this um, these researchers uh, did this paper which suggests to me that percent encoded host names are not common in URLs. So uh, <laughs> anyway, they're, they're clearly documented in, in uh, the RFCs, uh, like uh, 3986, um, that it's supposed to work and this is how you do it. So now curl supports it as, as well. At, it at least decodes them. It's much harder to encode them when you extract the URL again, because when you, if you want to do IDNs like international domain names, you don't want them percent encoded. You want them uh, using the native, well, UTF-8 mostly. So, uh, kind of a difficult subject, but at least decoding percent encodes uh, is easy. Uh, you're right, and a few more bugs that we fixed. We now, uh, if you enable HTTP3, we now make it use Quick version one, the official uh, uh, version in the uh, sort of in the connection setup. When you when you s uh, negotiate a connection or s uh, do a handshake in Quick, you actually ask for a specific Quick version. And up until now, we, we've used a draft version. But since now, since Quick is actually now an official RFC, we can then switch to use the official version one. Uh, version number really it had it that has a little side effect that some servers then assume that if you're using quick version one you're also using http3 the official version and not the draft version of h of h3 so we now also ask for h3 the official version and h3 29 the draft version at least if you build with it in gtcp2 for http3 a little bit complicated there, but um, if you're in, into HTTP 3, I think you understand me. Other little tiny things is that if you specify a curl command line to save uh, e-tags 
into a file name that you can't create. Like for example, you specify a complete path and the path doesn't exist, or I mean the directory doesn't exist. It would fail, actually, it would previously would fail the entire command line. Mwah, bail. Now it will only fail that particular transfer that will use that etag save, or that would have used that etag save, so it can actually do the other transfers that don't use that particular etag save. <coughs> And also wanted to then also highlight a little, you know, sort of the next step thing here. So we have this tool in curl called check source that we have to, it verifies the code style. So when someone submits a pull request or whatever, it actually just verifies that most of the code style in the, in the repository or, or sort of in the directory, the C source code is forma formatted the way we think it should be formatted. It's called check source. And in this cycle, I added test cases to verify that check source is actually warning correctly for a lot of things that it should warn about. Because as we're adding more things to check source and make it more and more capable and better, and it also becomes more complicated. So I'm also in the sort of, uh, I fear that we will so at some point break it so that it won't detect some errors. Anyway, now it checks that. Going further. so. <clears throat> of course, um, that was some of the changes, the, the, the six changes and, and 13 bug fixes we've done. We've done, as I said, 117 uh, log bug fixes. So, so there are a lot more. Read up on the change log on the website if you want to find out about the others. Um, but we have many more pull requests pending. Some of them are new changes and new features. So I think it's likely that the next release will become 7.88, uh, 81, I should say, 7.81.0, unless with something terrible has happened and we need to do another panic patch release. But uh, I'm cr uh, crossing my fingers that uh, we won't have to do any panic releases this time. Uh, <clears throat> so a few of the things that might show up in the next release or in a pending release coming soon at least. That's stuff like um, avoid overriding, lo uh, overriding local files. We have a PR for that. Uh, it's been around for a while. I think we should be able to get that to land. That's of course for the command line tool so that you can, uh, for your script needs or whatever, make sure that if there's a local file called whatever and you want try to download to that uh, same file name it'll use another file name instead um, we have a pr for importing and exporting ssl session ids to make them survive for example different invokes uh, of command line tools or, or restarts and whatever i think that might come i think we're still discussing details in that pr but who knows there are PRs to fix up things in um, in the API use we use for a OpenSSL v3. OpenSSL v3 is deprecating a bunch of different APIs, and we've basically just for now told the compiler to uh, ignore that, don't tell us about those. But there are things we should fix in there to make sure to make it more future-proof for for that moment in time in the future when the OpenSSL project will ditch the the old ones that they have deprecated. We're going into a fun, I, I mentioned uh, URL parsers previously that are, are uh, a weird, I mean, they're really an ugly piece in, in the sort of internet protocol uh, infrastructure. And another tiny little thing that is also weird that maybe we have sort of haven't really fell into that much is how to, um, how to escape or encode field names and file names when doing multi-pot form posts. Uh, I think that was originally documented in RFC 1867, uh, a very long time ago. And, uh, and over time, the browsers and everyone has actually changed how, to, how they behave and how they think about this. And recently, Firefox joined Chrome in how to how to escape field names and file names if they're using non-ASCII things. And um, now they're th both of those browsers. And since Chrome does it, that means, you know, all the other Chromium based browsers do as well. They now percent escape them instead of backslash escape them. And curl 
up until now uses the backslash escape mechanism to do it. And while, of course, that's a sort of, okay, Firefox used it up until just, you know, a few months ago and, and Curl still uses it. And, and I, I'm pretty sure Chrome also used to do the backslash version um, up until some point. I don't know exactly when they switched. But since they switched, I'm pretty sure that we will sooner or later run into problems when server ends are going to assume that clients are sending data now with percent encoded field names. So if curl doesn't do percent encoding, we will run into some issues. Anyway, we have a PR for this. Uh, Patrick Monrat has written it. So we will most likely switch to the percent encoding format by default going forward and uh, allow users to switch on some switch to go back to the old backslash escaped version so that we users can uh, opt in to use the old version if they need to but i think the world going forward is going to use the percent escaping mechanism fairly complicated but uh, you know fun stuff that's why we're here there are other prs to um, possibly merge and, and work on so you know some of the work that we might see then going forward is of course more http 3 fixes i i want to work on getting some basic http 3 tests added at least experimental so that and then start working on perhaps some of the known bugs we have with http 3 i, I think we have about six or seven of them already documented in the known bugs document so maybe grab one of those work on fixing that and making sure that we can uh, verify at least basic functionality of that uh, in the test suite and i have an idea of how to do it as well more about that uh, later we have this stream window size pr uh, still pending uh, web sockets maybe we have the manage c protocol still also pending to discuss or maybe i don't know how to deal with it really bring your opinion as well um, there are certainly going to be more hyper improvements really depending on how much other work i get i i should be able to go back to that and make sure that to make sure that we enable more and more tests with hyper and make sure that the hyper building with hyper should work exactly the same as building natively and at some point we should can then remove the experimental tag from that option. So that's pretty much it. We are aiming for the next release on January 5, 2022. So we're already now then done the last release for this year, hopefully. Uh, and we're sticking to the schedule, ideally here. So that means that on Monday, this Monday, we that's what the 15th, uh, hopefully we will open the feature window again and allow features and changes to get merged for you know another three and a half weeks until we close the feature window again. And if you wanna look up on our release notes or what's pending for the next release, this is the URL to check out the slash dev slash release notes dot HTML because it's always uh, updated, well, always regularly updated um and if you're lucky you all also have the uh, curl docker image for 7.80.0 available when you see this because i hear that jim has it uh, very soon done and uploaded <clears throat> we're still aiming for a curl version 8 in march 2023 to sort of celebrate the curl 25 years anniversary and that's now less than 500 days away uh, it's not going to be any really major new features or functionality, but we're going to reset the minor number and the patch number. More about version 8 another time. If you have any sort of issues, you want help, you want support, you want uh, new f whatever, training, bug fixes, get in touch and we will help you. I do commercial support uh, for whatever level of support you need. If you have any issues or bugs, uh, problems submit them on github on this url mm, we are pretty good at taking care of them um, and fixing whatever problems you have and we do appreciate them and we need them even if you find typos in documentation or something that is just a minor thing let us know we we improve curl every sort of in every little area all the time <clears throat> 
if you suspect a curl security problem, as I mentioned previously, um, report your security problem on this URL. This is on hackerone.com slash curl. And the reports will be, they are private uh, until we have been able to handle them and we will handle them swiftly and within, well, timely. I can't really guarantee you time, but it's very, it's basically never happens that we actually have a security problem um, St uh, stay around uh, over a release. So we almost always manage to fix the problem in the next release. And that's that's the goal here, really. And of course, we will have a communication with you much, much faster. So if you submit a security problem, we will respond within hours, I'm sure. We have a lot of good sponsors in the Curl project. And of course, I sometimes I think I should <coughs> have this uh, image as a background when I do my presentation here. These are the good companies that are all sponsors helping out the project here uh, with infrastructure, uh, CI and money and uh, to make sure that we can run the project as good as uh, we can and we do and be able to, you know, pay out bug bounties and run everything as smooth smoothly as we do. So thank you all the good sponsors. These are, are these are good companies, you know. And uh, that's about what I wanted to say for this time. This is curl.80.0 uh, and we're on curl.se, of course. We celebrated uh, a one year anniversary for, uh, of this domain name just uh, a week ago, I think. That's it for this time. <clears throat> See you um, in the next release video. Bye.